What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Monday night edition of HTF Live coming at you with Joe. Uh, I almost said Joseph. Joseph is not here. Uh, Jesse oh. and Joshua, uh, but no Joseph coming at you uh, after a busy weekend of racing. Uh, definitely in the in the southeast, but across the country, a lot of tracks getting fired up and getting going with their weekly stuff. Definitely had definitely had a lot of regional super late model racing with national guys uh, dipping in. I guess is is that how you would describe a lot of uh, the the main, the big events this past weekend, the spring nationals in Tennessee regional, but you had some national level guys there, and the same thing with. I still haven't figured out how to say it. Did, any, did anybody? get that <laughs> want to help me with that no did not uh <laughs> have, a, yeah something like that <laughs> yeah Jesse, yeah. you're the you're the one you know, oh listen i have no idea mamba mamba week <laughs> speedway i don't know that wasn't even close jesse <laughs> mahiqua Mahi it ain't that moquaqueta <laughs> is how it Marquee. looks that sounds about right aqueta yeah, something like that. Anyway, had uh, and then you had, like I said, national guys there. So I, I guess it wasn't. There was no national series racing, but you know, I felt like big events nonetheless. Yeah, I would say that was the bigger one. I think that had the majority of the national guys that came together. I think I had like five, six or something. I counted that was at that race. Yeah, I felt like it was Pierce and RTJ. I guess Gustin was there. Pierce, RTJ, Tyler Herb. Yeah. Uh, Alberson, mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Shepard. I mean, I just honest. felt like there was a little bit more national level yeah. guys. That, I'll that be toured honest, I didn't. There, I didn't. I don't know. I just didn't pay a lot of attention to the you know, other events this weekend because we had you know a lot going on, um, and you know, and family stuff. Yeah, uh, Easter. Right by the way, stuff. hope everybody had a, a great Easter it, uh, it felt weekend. Like, and I think yeah, 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 same thing. But I felt like even Friday or whatever day we we did you know our picks and everything that you know that that race up there was RTJ and Pierce. And yeah, you know, like you kind of knew that going <laughs> into it. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, and, and that's what it. Know. And that's what whereas, it was like. Um, whereas in the the race at you know I seventy five and and Tazewell and you know really Friday night was the one that was most interesting to see what guys went where between Spring Nationals at I seventy five and the Mid East uh, Mid East series at Ultimate. Um, you know that was a real interesting, and you had some you know some going. You know, it's kind of cool when you have that feel of uh, you don't know who's going to show up where, right? We get so used to once the national tours get going and the series kind of, mm -hmm. you know, everyone kind of picks where they're going to be for the year. You kind of, it gets real predictable about who's going where, whereas, um, you know, and of course you got websites and, you know, everyone posting on social media where they're going and all that. But, uh, you know, some, there were some questions about who was going where this week, um, you know, and it made it real interesting, you know, Friday night to see how those two fields shook, sh uh, shook out and be honest. They were both really, uh, really good fields. Um, yeah, talking about, and, you're right, and, and ultimate. Yeah. And ultimate, and to me, they better, other than, I mean, to me, it was more interesting, those two were more interesting than the Iowa race. Yeah. Um, just because of the depth of field between the two. Yeah, right? 40 so, cars at each one over, or 43 and 39. Yeah, something like that. So we got, we jumped right into it. We got a little, a little, uh, head start there. I did want to say right off the top before, uh, before we get too far into it, uh, on our main channel, had the video from Friday night. We, by the way, raced at uh, Southern Raceway, Southern All-Stars. Joseph raced. Spoiler alert, if you have not seen the video yet, close your ears. If if uh, Y'all do know we have people that always get mad if we... And over on the yeah. vlogs, if we if, if they know what happened, you know, beforehand. Um, so if that's you, you might want to go somewhere else. But anyway, Joseph won <laughs> <laughs> Friday night, uh, the night one edition of the double header at Southern Raceway, Southern All-Stars. And we hadn't gotten to do this in a while because we hadn't won a race in a while, but we're doing free shipping on the website through midnight tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, that's htfmerch.com. And if you enter the code Beach Bash, right? That's what we went with, wasn't it? Beach, Beach, Beach Bash. Bash one word. Use that discount code and it's free shipping through tuesday uh through midnight tomorrow night tuesday um and so all kinds of good stuff over there t-shirts got some new t-shirts hats hoodies uh mini doors decals all kinds of good stuff and go get some coffee and get free shipping on it a uh, bag of hunt the front coffee so anyway got that right off the top um check that video out if you haven't already we'll probably touch on southern a little bit here um joseph won friday night our buddy bo slay won on 
Saturday night. Both of those feature videos are available on the Hunt the Front TV YouTube channel. And then uh, we'll have our vlog from Saturday out probably Wednesday before I'll get that edited and posted. But yeah, there's what. Oh, and then we'll talk a, a whole lot more about that. Joseph will be here with us and we'll talk about that on the HTF Nation podcast later in the week. That'll be on Patreon, patreon.com slash hunt the front where you can get signed up for that a whole nother podcast that we do that's exclusive over there we've been doing that for three or four years now and we're still doing that we'll have joseph with us on that one and we'll talk about our racing from the weekend we'll touch on it here uh obviously but um we'll get in depth on it there and then also uh if you want to hear this listen to all of our podcasting uh on your favorite podcasting app if you get signed up for patreon hdf nation on patreon that'll allow you to do that as well all right i think that covers all the any other plugs jesse you got any big races coming up on the gaming channel i do not but we are going to play some call of duty on wednesday night yeah i'm almost y'all right. almost got me you didn't even have to say it. you hadn't actually even tried to but you almost got me talked into de uh, downloading call of duty again so i can play with y'all wednesday night yeah Wednesday night, trying to is put it together some, a, some new thing or something coming out. Or well, it's a, it? it's a, it's an old new thing. So it's an old map that we used to play, and then uh, they did away with it. And now they're bringing it back, so it's oh. a big deal. And it was arguably one of the better, you know, resurgence maps mm. that there were. Anyway, but that's that's you know, that's, anyway, that's, that's Wednesday night for the gaming stuff. Uh, Hunt right. the front gaming on YouTube or Twitch, yep. where you can find that that's Wednesday right. night. All right. Um, yes, Bo did win with our rear end. By the way, yeah, he did. He did. He did. <laughs> Still, uh, Jesse was. Uh, I don't know. I'm. I'm a little worried. Jesse might have already gotten a percentage of that, and he didn't tell us because he was the first over there with his hand out. <laughs> anyway, no, we'll, I, I, we'll, I didn't get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm talking about. We'll get into that um, later on. But yeah, a lot of racing over the weekend. You had Overton win. I guess the uh, the thrilling race of the weekend. Uh, I-75 last lap pass of mcdowell did you fellas see that i did oh, yeah. we got a lot of interesting things coming out of there and i mean that was interesting in itself obviously uh but the whole uh the fact that he was on american racers and and won that race and not on hoosiers kind kind of kind of find that interesting it is it, it's kind of it stirs the it, pot it a little well, you know what i mean it's interesting when coupled with his his victory lane you know comments yes yes yeah. so we got to get to that hot stirring you speak right there, yeah we gotta we gotta <laughs> is it is it going is it gonna make it better for everybody that's 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 what brandon said in victory lane uh but we'll get to that um then uh friday night pierce wins at moqua Keta. See, somebody, so that people from iowa something. are really mad at us can someone type it in the comments Ma like the pronunciation of it maquota maquota Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Yeah, I like that better. All right. Ma Quokata. Ma Quokata. Ma Quokata. Anyway, I like Pierce wins Roll there it. on um, Friday, RTJ Saturday, um, over at Taswell, the Spring Nationals Saturday race. Uh, McDowell gets revenge and beats Overton there. You had, um, what else you have? Joseph won Friday night, like I said, so Southern All Stars at Southern. Bo wins Saturday um, over Mississippi. Chad Thrash wins Friday. Spencer Hughes Saturday. What else we go? Uh, Ultimate Dalton Wilson won there Friday, yep. and Zach Mitchell wins at Cherokee Saturday. Oh, and Clarksville. That's Clarksville. the one. I, that's the one. There was so much racing. I knew like there's a whole track, a whole event. I'm forgetting the toilet bowl. You had Blair. No, no, no. Winger wins Friday. Max Blair wins mm -hmm. Saturday. Did I? Uh, yep. Did I round them all up there, or did I skip something? Uh, you got Mississippi State. Yep. Uh, yeah, now that that pretty much that covers the as far as everybody that wins. Yeah. So, so Joshua, you kind of finished off our our show last week Thursday when we were picking who was going to win what, and you said you were interested to see like if a regional guy could break out. Um, you know, it was the first big regional weekend we had with a bunch of regional races going on. Did anybody jump out at you um not really uh because i mean i mean spencer hughes nothing unexpected like oh what a performance right, right. that we saw um because you had you know overton winning at i-75 um dalton wilson winning at ultimate it's not a regional guy but maybe reestablish you know re uh 
reestablishes, you know, him as a potential, you know, having a lot of potential this year uh, as a breakout guy. But again, that's on the national level. McDowell, you know, winning at at Tazewell. Um, then you go to the regional, you know, more more regional stuff. Like you said, those kind of turned into regional races with national flair, right? Mm-hmm, uh, yeah, exactly. But then you go down into the more regional stuff. Uh, even Clarksville, you had, um, you know, Winger winning there. You know, I mean that that's not unexpected. Uh, Max Blair, um, you know, winning was unexpected, but again, it's a national guy. I mean, kind of. Well, Jesse wait, picked not him. Not unexpected. Okay. Not not unexpected. Picked him. I'm just saying. Then you then you go to the, the more regional level. Spencer Hughes winning at Why Not's not a big surprise. Joseph yeah. Warner winning at Southern not a big surprise. Bo Slay winning there, although it is his home track. Maybe you know. I mean, as far as I guess that's the only one that you would say um is Bo winning at southern where he's a won a southern all-stars guy, race there he, before too so he has um mm-hmm. you know but where a regional guy took advantage you know really you know kind of stepped out you know so got some got some spotlight right mm-hmm. um you know took advantage of that opportunity uh to to get some spotlight with the national tours off so i i mean i guess zach mitchell again another one zach mitchell at cherokee um a lot of un I don't know. Sometimes you feel like it's getting too predictable. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, I can see you that. that mm-hmm. You know, um, but I don't know. I, I mean, what? I, I don't feel like anyone really stepped out. I think Spencer Hughes. You know, I kind of look at it like this: Who did enough to? Um, what What I used when we were talking about that on Friday or whenever we did the thing was like you don't see any regional guys very often in the dirt on dirt top twenty five anymore, right? Like it's you know the national tours, you know whoever, and then a couple other guys, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, basically, if you're on a national tour in the top 10 and halfway decent, you're automatic, you're shoe in for the top 25. Whereas used to, you know, it was you had to be running pretty well on the top uh, on a national tour because you had all these regional guys doing well and, you know, winning notable races. And you just don't, for whatever reason, see that much anymore. And, you know, I'm thinking, like, did anyone do enough to kind of crack that level? Maybe Spencer Hughes. But then again, you're comparing it to his Speed Week's performance. And it's like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. He did make, was it Brownstown? Or atomic, one of those he, he made. I think atomic he made a couple weeks ago. So the maybe couple show. that with, yeah, yeah, couple that with his, um, I believe the Southern All Stars win and now his Mississippi State Series win. Maybe he does. Maybe he gets in there. So um, yeah, I don't know. I think Joseph winning on Friday doesn't do enough. You know, at Southern the field wasn't deep enough, and he spo- it's a race he's supposed to win. Yeah. So I don't know that. And then know, Saturday was also a race he was expected to win and did not. Right. So right. So yeah. I don't know. I- it wasn't any, like anybody shook anything up with a big, I don't know, surprising win or dominating performance. Like you said, it's just sort of what you expected to happen happened uh, in a lot of ways. Um, some guys ran well that you know needed to get um, in a, a good run, that kind of thing. But no one really, um, I don't know, shook things up and really got your attention. I guess. How about, here's here's an example that uh, did I see that Brandon Carpenter ran second. Yeah, second, and why not? He wins that's that's big right like mm-hmm. and non when it, with no national tours racing that kind of it's like oh look at that right it kind of becomes a big deal right um you know that would have been an example of, of one that you know could have shook things up a little bit and some some unexpected excitement right yeah that we could have enjoyed but anyhow the, the uh the other thing you touched on friday was and you already kind of touched on this a little bit but the car counts uh you know being so much racing going on especially in the southeast did i think we had uh 39 and 43 friday night with i-75 and over at uh ultimate i know it was a little low at southern with i think 15 or 16 um as far as 27 or 28 at clarksville though yeah well on friday Mm -hmm. yeah and so that's from from clarksville over to I-75 and, and Ultimate, which, you know, it's not close, but, I mean, um, you know, definitely Southeast, you had over over 100, what, 110, you know. Yeah, there was a lot of cars. <laughs> if you, um, yeah. Did you include Hattiesburg there? You mentioned Hattiesburg, right? They had 22 cars yeah. there, so that's Southeast as well. Um, is it is it kind of odd that I feel like this, that McQuit, Mc, whatever, <laughs> got the Nippy 50. Like <laughs> yeah, there's only 20. There. The Nippy 50 only had 25, 26 well, cars, and that's not even close to these other, like... Yeah, but that's also I mean, not a big late model area, right? I'm I'm assuming not. Usually when you surely not, think of Iowa, well, you think of, of open wheel country more so than, than late model. And that was the biggest paying race no, of it wasn't. the wasn't. Taswell was 21,000. What? Taswell. Yes, yeah, Saturday night. Oh. Yep. 
Surprise okay, there. I lied. <laughs> I lied. They were close, though. Uh, it, was, it was a total of $30,000 up for grabs to win at that one track. That's true. Yeah. For the doubleheader. So let's let's do this real quick. How many you had? How many do we have at Southern on Friday night? Sixteen, 16 officially signed 16. in. All right, and you had twenty three at uh, Hattiesburg. Correct. Uh, and then we had twenty eight at Clarksville, uh, plus thirty nine at I seventy five and forty three at Ultimate. Correct. So that is a total of one hundred and forty nine cars. Racing on Friday night, racing in the southeast, 149 super late models. Super late models. Oh, that's not even that's not counting Iowa out there. That's just in the yeah, southeast. Yeah, I'm saying in the southeast, right? Yeah. You know, that's what I was really focused on. You know, it's hard to complain um, about that, right? I mean, that's you know, we talk about the health of the sport. I don't know why it's such a divide. Like why you felt like of those 149 cars, we, you know, it didn't feel like there was a lot of them that had the potential of winning those races, right? Like each race, you kind of you felt like you could predict if you got to pick three guys, you'd probably pick the winner. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. um, if you get, definitely five, right? If, if you pick yeah. five guys, you're probably picking the winner of each of the, you know, um, but if, between each of those races, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't, yeah, don't there, it, it, it is, uh, you know, you can kind of see who's going to probably gravitate toward where, and then you can know which four or five are going to probably, you know, you would put your money on. That's, that's about, the way it's gotten um, in, in any race, really, honestly. Well, ahead, Jesse. My, my problem with when we were picking about the winners, my problem was is I didn't exactly know who was going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, like none of us picked Winger to win at Clarksville. Uh, I, didn't and I, didn't know Overton, I didn't know Overton was going to be we at the other known that. We should have known that Overton was going to be at the Spring Nationals races. Speaking so, of which, let's get into that. Um I think to me the most interesting race of the weekend had to have been Overton passing McDowell on the final lap at uh, I-75 Raceway Spring Nationals. Uh, you had McDowell seemed to be, I don't know, seemed to have it. Most of the race he seemed to be the, like he was going to win, like it wasn't going to be much of an issue, and Overton was just going to run second, right? Well, then later, late in the race, to get the lap traffic, Overton starts catching him, starts catching him, and then surprisingly – Right, I didn't really think, and I'll be honest, I wasn't watching it live. But going back and watching the replay of it, and I had no, I knew that Overton won, but it's like, well, when's he going to catch him? You know what I, I mean? And then yes. all of a sudden, that last lap and a half or whatever, it's just like he's on him, and and McDowell never gets back down, and Overton ends up getting by him there, going down the back straightaway, and and wins the race. McDowell finishes second. Uh, my question for you guys: uh, Did it seem like more of Overton getting up on the wheel and going and winning it, or McDowell slipping up and and giving one away. I uh, I'll say that I, I like just watching it. Like I'm pretty sure there's only one caution in that race, if I'm not mistaken. Wasn't I know there any. was a, a a hell of a green flag run, and McDowell was way out on Overton. Mm-hmm. And, and for Overton just be able to run him down and you know get there and be there to attack in the lap traffic. Like he had the car, I think he had the better car. And now, like you said, McDowell just never really got back down. But if you watched it, they were both kind of running up the racetrack a little mm-hmm. bit, and the lap traffic is what kind of I like. Well, I, I think know. It, it might be one of those situations where it's easier, especially in traffic, to be running second than running first. Yeah. And you know what? What's Brandon going to do? He's going to go wherever McDowell, McDowell isn't. Know? Yeah. Whereas McDowell has to make the decision, and then he has to live with it. Whereas Overton, you're just doing whatever, you know, the opposite of what the leader does and mm-hmm. work it out, right? So I, I can't, I don't think, I don't know that either is, you know, one won it, you know, stole it or the other gave it away or anything like that. It just, it's the way it played out. It's a out. classic um, case of better to be uh, second than leading in, in the yep. situation, I guess. Yep. Or possibly. Exactly. The, uh, the other interesting thing that came out of I-75 with the Spring Nationals was Overton winning on the American racers and then in victory lane, the thing that I thought was interesting about it was how he said that uh, I have his quote written down somewhere because, you know, I don't want to misquote anyone. I want to thank American racer. You know, they're helping us out. It's nice. It feels good to win on something a little different and shake things up a little bit. It's just going to be better for everybody. So first of all, <laughs> go, go ahead, Jesse. I, I I disagree. Who? I, let me rephrase. 
Hoosier will disagree with that statement <laughs> that it's better for everybody. Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> you disagree, Jesse, or what are you saying? I mean, oh, I mean, think it's... You're not better for Hoosier is what you're yes, saying. Yes, I'm, oh, I'm okay. saying that, that, that uh, Overton says it's just going to be better for everybody. Hoosier would disagree. You know, that, that's what I'm saying. Because mm -hmm. it definitely Overton makes things up. For, for the racers when he says right. everybody. I, 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 I think that's what he means. And I'm owners. Not, I don't think he's including Hoosier in that mm -hmm. group of, of everybody. The tire know, manufacturers. I'm just, he said everybody, and I'm just saying who wouldn't be happy with Calling it. Calling him on a technicality there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Go ahead. I was going to say, I was also going to point out that uh, Dalton Cook ran second Friday night at Southern on American Racers, and Bo won Saturday night. On, I don't know if he was on all American racers. He, he qualified and, and ran on a right rear American racer. So just a, another little thing. So it's funny because he I was, go ahead. It was two tenths faster two in tenths. qualifying. Um, and then I don't. We never. Joseph never got to race with Bo in the feature. It was one lane, and and um, Joseph never could get to second. Uh, but I feel like Joseph had the speed to run with Bo in the feature, but Bo definitely had everyone else um, covered in qualifying. But to me, so we saw that um, Friday night, Overton winning on American Racers and his comments there in, in victory lane. And then Saturday night, I didn't realize till Saturday that, that Dalton Cook had run an American Racer, uh, had run American Racers the night before and run second to Joseph on them. Um, but I found that out at the track and then on Bo, we knew what he had on and that he outrun us with it. And then it's like, well, where'd this conversation all of a sudden come from? Right. Yeah. The, the whole, you know, having possibly having tire choices, tire brand choices coming back into the fray here. Is that, uh, the, you know, we, we, the title yeah. of the, the live here was a, a tire war coming. Is that something we should be looking for or should be worried about? Uh, yeah, so here's here's why I think I don't know exactly. I haven't called and got a price on a on American racer, but from what I heard was an American racers are like 140 to 145 dollars, and Hoosiers are 200, you know, to upward 200, 220, mm -hmm. something like that. My understanding. Um, so when you get start getting outperformed or what buy it might look up tire, by a, yeah, but if it starts appearing that you're getting outperformed by a cheaper tire. There's that that's going to create some some problems, uh, and and for Hoosier and 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 for series decisions to be made, I think, and to maybe better the sport. I don't know. I don't know. Well, make it, it cheaper on the racers. It creates concern, is what it creates. If you're a guy that's like us that's running Hoosiers, right, and we get outrun by an American racer, well, then you got to be thinking like, is that what made the difference? You know what I mean? Was it the the other tire brand being better than the tire brand we had? It creates some some concern there, I yeah. suppose. Which is a problem in itself because then it's like, okay, a team like us, okay, now we have to have Hoosiers and uh, some American racer options, and that's that's I don't think that we want to. Well, go it that increases route. your tire bill or your yeah, tire that. inventory, but, right? Joshua, Joshua, do you have anything to add over there? <laughs> So here's the thing you got to keep in mind when we're talking about the, the tire situation and American racers uh, outrunning Hoosiers is uh, they should be. Okay, those those American racers, 44s, 48s, or pro whatever they're calling them, you know, that was the supposed to be the American racer version of the 1350s and 1600s, right? The What Hoosier would, would call, I believe, the open their open competition tires. And now when they went to the NLMT tire rule, national – tire rule uh hoosier you know brought a spec tire right a you know everyone talks about how you know it's not as good as the 1350 yeah. or the 1600 right and how you know last year with uh when there was that changeover uh the you know transition period burnoff period of the 1350s and 1600s uh how guys were you know you didn't want to be stuck without you know not having any when you could run them right yeah. guys wanted if you if the 1350s were better. allowed you wanted to try to somehow have or some great tires yeah, and, or uh, the crate 21s mind, the crate 21s and uh, whatever the other compound harder count compound is you know are, are supposed to be uh you know um the the the, the hard version of that and they're supposed to be crate 55 d, d there, 55 there crate 55 anyway is is supposed to be the 600 right the crate version of uh, 1600 i'm sorry right um mm -hmm. anyhow so hoosier did away with those and went to the twos threes and fours and 
admittedly said they're not as good of a tire and they should be a couple tenths slower. Um, so the question is, what is, you know, Hoosier went to with a, a slower tire and now it is running up against the American racer tire that it had, it has always like always been better than right. Mm -hmm. There's a reason no one else, no one was running American racers before the Hoosier tire, you know, prevalent yeah. tire. I remember, I think it was GR Smith bolting on an American racer at Southern a couple of years back. And and he's always been good at Southern, right? He's won, yeah. won races there, beat outrun Joseph there. And one night he, I don't remember exactly. That was exactly. our race. That was the, the, uh, the big so, race. Yeah, the, um, uh, the King, King of the Sandbox. Sandbox. And he bolted on an American racer and whoop, <laughs> straight yep, to the back. Backwards. I remember. So, go ahead. Well, I'm just saying, so the point is, I mean, that's how it's been, right? Like there, there, mm -hmm. were, inst there were instances where, you know, when, when series allowed both tires were every now and then the American racer, for whatever reason, you know, at certain tracks would be better, um, mm -hmm. you know, would, would, and it would be, you know, it would be noticeably better. You'd have a guy just smoke the field and you'd realize, oh, he was on an American racer. And for some reason that American racer compound was better, you know, on this one event, but you know, 90% of the time, yeah. the Hoosiers were the car that winning the tire, uh, winning, right. At least that's, mm -hmm. I mean, my, you know, maybe if we go back 20 years ago, but definitely since I've been covering this, you know, covered the sport as a journalist and following it as a fan and now as a promoter. And then so Hoosier comes out with this tire, this spec tire, they put everyone on and say, we're going to help you guys by putting you on a spec tire. Uh, you know, that's che supposedly cheaper. Um, <laughs> Jesse chiming in chat. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was hoping someone Dude would in the middle about looking. his new haircut or say something about his yeah, new haircut. Man. Look, it looks a lot better than when you left the shop this afternoon. Dude, I, I was looking homely. To Jesse and chat. Dude in the middle looking fresh. Yeah. Appreciate looking sharp. Dog, not, Jesse. <laughs> no, no problem. Probably and breaking Joshua's train of thought. Go, go continue. I'm carry sorry. On. You didn't have to read it. <laughs> I did well. Anyhow. <laughs> No, we have to if they someone you know. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. In the chat. All right, know? sorry. Go. On. <laughs> anyway, uh, point being is, so what's who's you're going to do now? They still last year, like the 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 uh, the series that allowed Hoosiers and American racers were typically allowing thirteen fifties crate twenty ones. If you still had them, right? Like you know that was a thing. Now that those have been phased out, the thirteen fifties. And we're typically most series are no longer allowing the crate tires to run. Well, yeah, you would expect the American racers to perform better. They they've said that I've heard, I can't, I'm not going to name any names, but you know, guys, well, now we know Overton's running them, but before that you were hearing guys were testing them and being two tenths faster. I right? heard two tenths. That was the number yeah. that I heard as well. The American okay, racers one. versus the mm -hmm. LM, the new yep. two, threes, four. Going just to test different difference was right. The, the mm -hmm. American racer was the, the, you know, in most, you know, across the board, uh, well, you know, standard, not every situation, but the average situation was two tenths faster, right? So what happens then the NLMT, what happens when Hoosier gets tired of everyone saying, oh, why are we, you know, run, getting outran on a cheaper tire? And they said, fine, we'll go back to the 1350 and 1600 rubber. And now they're two tenths faster the other way, right? Hoosier <laughs> goes back to being two tenths faster. So then we all end up back on 1350s and 1600s two tenths faster than American racers version of that tire. And all these guys like Overton and, and Donald McIntosh and, uh, 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 Bo and, um, Dalton uh, cook, Dalton cook. That's one of the ones I think of are getting out. Right. You know, they're going to go back to Hoosier and we're all going to end up right back where we were. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, oh, sir, is, but probably pay you more, thing. more money. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, do we do? I, I mean, that's the theory is, does this pressure Hoosier into lowering their price? I don't know. Like, I mean, maybe they can't, I, that would be their probably their argument. And they, they, you know, supply chain, you know, cost of goods, people, all this and that. Who knows? But point being is, it doesn't, it, I don't think this has proven anything or it's not like, oh, wow, American racers have caught up. No, Hoosier built a slower tire at, for the NLMT. And they're not going to, they're not going to let, you know, eventually they're going to say, well, we're not going to just get out, you know, the, yeah. they're going to pressure the series. Yeah. Which again, if you know all the powers, you know politics at play here, and who's in charge of the different series and everything. Will the other will the series allow the thirteen fifties or six, or if, if I mean the easy fix for Hoosier is just say you have to allow the crate tires. If you're going to allow, you know, uh, American Racer forty four forty eight in your tire rule, you have to allow the the crate our crate tires, right? Which for, are equivalent uh, to thirteen fifty sixteen hundred. Yes. And then the crate tires are they, good because yeah. they're out there, right? They never quit making those. Um, and then eventually they either just, those become the new Hoosier tire or then, you know, we, 
Did they rebrand them back as the 13 or maybe the ones and two or twos and threes become uh 13, 50, 16. I don't know where they can come up with these, you know, numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Who knows? What I'm saying is, okay, this, this won't last is what I'm saying. Right. Something. And I don't know if it's going to be a change for, for better for everybody, or if we're just going to end up right back where we were, who knows? We'll see, but it, it, they shook things up for shaking things up for sure. Yeah. I, well, I guess one thing to point out is a lot of, of fans or, or I just see the, the theory is that if you have competition in something, right, you have cheaper prices and that sounds, I mean, and that might even be true, but my, my just coming from the standpoint of a racer, we're going possibly, I don't, don't book your plane tickets or whatever yet, but we're thinking we might end up at Buckshot Friday night with Joseph. If everything, we can get our stuff together. Well, that's a Ray Cook, a spring nationals race. You can run American racers. You can run Hoosiers. Well, we just got outrun by an American racer at Southern. The last, uh, one of the last spring nationals race, the Friday night race was won by an American racer. So what are we thinking we might need to buy before going to Buckshot? You know what I mean? We don't have yeah. a single American racer in our inventory, but we're going to go race against them. And what if we show up and they're two tenths better than us at Buckshot? Guess what we better have in the trailer? Guess what we better go buy a set of this week, even though we got Hoosiers on the shelf. You see, so yeah. in, in actuality, you're now spending more money. Even if it brings the cost down, you know, having competition, the racer will end up spending more money. That's my opinion. You know, or that's where I, I I don't think it makes it. So if we go to a Lucas Oil, a World Outlaws, or a Hunt the Front Series race, everybody has to run Hoosier. So we don't have to have two different brands in the trailer. We just have to have two different compounds. Right. I don't. I don't. That's just that's my concern with it. Is well, and, and not only that, but again, racer. We can say competition lowers the. Uh, the, you know the price the cost and, and and that's true but what also what dictates the cost is demand right and here's what's going to happen is you know, we all know this racers are going to spend whatever it takes to win mm -hmm. right and if hoosier goes you know right now if american racers are winning races yeah it's like hey we might have to get some luckily they're they're cheaper apparently um you know we had not I don't we don't know, don't by, know by the way jesse mentioned a price uh earlier in the uh, video here we don't know the price that don't take our word for that that's just what well, i heard around the racetrack i don't know that fair, that's it's for different sure. all these prices are different like you call and you ask the person who should know what and he's like you know 180 to 190 a tire and it's like well, what's the freaking price of the yeah tire? exactly and then you hear <laughs> guys are paying 140 a tire mm -hmm. and you hear who you know guys paying two 250 for the other tire, the other brand. Like, yeah. Like, why are we, why is it, why is it so different across the, of, of the same tire and other guys who depends on who's buying it? Right. Which is, yeah, I mean, another whole, it's other a whole other topic. <laughs> but point being is Hoosier won't, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not taking, a, I'm not taking a side by any means, but what I know is Hoosier will not keep making a cheap, a, a slower tire, right. And get mm -hmm. beat for long, right. Like they'll, something will change. And when if, they come back and it goes back like it was where the 1350 or the crate tires are two, you know, however much faster than the American racers, everybody's just going to go back to them because it gives them the chance to win. And, you know, it's all going to be, a, what's who's your want to charge for, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know, maybe American racers found something. They stepped up their, you know, R and D. And even if Hoosier went back to their, their other compounds, the American racers would still be just as competitive. I don't know, but I'm just telling you, I don't, you know, it isn't, nothing's really changed except for what tire is being allowed from Hoosier, which opens up a whole nother thing. If Hoosier does say, you know, well, you know, what, what are we going to do with, you know, allow these crate tires or we're going back to 1350s, 1600s, are they allowed back? I don't know. Like it's, it's a mess or it's, it's going to be a mess. I, I'm afraid, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah, it, we'll, and we'll see. I, and I will yeah. say I've, I've had people ask, well, what about the hunt, the front series? Well, we're for this year, dirt car. And which and, means, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, here's another thing and I'm, um, that I, I didn't know if I was going to bring up, but people who have been around the sport know this, that there's, whenever you have two brands, competing brands, the two tire companies are going to be testing things. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to have incentive to make sure their tire beats the other tire. Yes. And you're going to have, this was, the, I, I don't know. I wasn't around back in the old tire wars days, right? Like, or at least I wasn't aware, you know, I didn't know it was, you know, we were young. When it was the wild, right? wild west. Yeah. But you all, you hear of there was these times guys, some guys were getting tires 
that you know were marked stamped different things. than what they were. Or yada yada so yada. You heard- everyone would have to go buy the Hoosier or the American mm-hmm. Racer or the McCrary, whatever it was. Like I don't know. I'm not saying any of that's true, but I'm just saying it does open it to where if you if you don't have everyone on the same tire and you have multiple brands competing, right? Like they want to sell more tires than the other guy. What's going to sell the most tires? Being the best one. Everyone's going to want to buy what wins. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Um, you know, well, uh, we'll it's see. just a gi- it's a giant <laughs> pot. Yep. And it's just stirring right now. Yeah. Hey, I'll give and it's and it's going try- to turn not, into a listen, mess. I'm not trying to stir the pot. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. Is I know what Hoosier's going to do, right? They're not going to, you know, the two, the two, what they're the tire you have, right? They're not just going to let their tires just get beat. And there's, you know, they'll, they'll, when they know we got we got a better tire, and, right, available. I, I think the, you know, maybe we're getting the card ahead of the horse. Like this is only like one race, you know. Uh, okay, let it happen you know, a few more races. times. It's, it's, it's been, since, that's what since I'm saying. I think started running American racers. I, you knew it was coming. I, I right? think it needs to happen a, a little bit more before there's going to be action. You mm-hmm. know, from from maybe Hoosier. You know, before yeah, I mean, that happens, I think there needs to be some more solid ground laid on. A hey, American racers are kicking a right now. Like I don't think we're quite there yet. We could be there in just a minute. All it takes is a couple more I, wins. Hey, a couple more weekends. <laughs> I, it could be. I don't hey, know. Maybe Austin, Friday, Saturday night. I don't know. Austin, um, Honey? I, don't, I have no idea if mm-hmm. I'm saying that correctly. I apologize, and I apologize for the wait, too, but thank you for the four ninety nine, Austin. Hey, first time super chatting ever in a live stream. Really do appreciate it, buddy. Sure do appreciate that. Hey, and we hit 500 viewers. Be sure to drop a thumbs up and a like on the video. We'd really appreciate it before we go into this next topic. Hey, and subscribe if you hadn't already. Oh, yeah, and absolutely subscribe. All right, uh, so I, a lot of tire talk, you know, tire cheating, tire doping, tire brands, tire, you know what, hell, open it all up, let everybody do whatever they want. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, God, dog. It's just, it's just crazy. Let's just simplify really. everything, right? Ah, Lee. Oh, anyway. man. All right, what we got next on the on the, on yeah. the talks here? Uh, uh, let's, let's, maybe, you know, maybe Brandon uh, Overton winning in a – Wells. Uh, <laughs> While we're talking about Overton, we want to him stirring the pot. We yeah. want to talk about the other pot he's stirring. Uh, yeah, he's got some. He's got a couple, you know, sticks in the fire. To, did you want to tell him about the the, the the news you thought you unearthed, Jonathan? Is that what we're going <laughs> to here? Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, I, so we started doing this podcast thing, Speed Weeks, right? What, like a month or so ago, or a month and a half, whatever it was, February. Yeah. And and since then, I have you know, I I'm one of those guys that I'm. I don't pay good enough attention to anything, um, but I've been trying to pay attention to the world of dirt late model racing because we sit here and talk about it, right? Um, and I don't want to look like a dummy, you know, might be one, but I don't want to look like one. Just because you are one doesn't mean you got to look like one. You know what I'm saying? So I try to keep up with things. And I thought for sure that Brandon Overton was still trying to hide the fact that he wasn't driving a Longhorn. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had no idea that he, I thought, I, I didn't know that he it was out there that he was in a Wells chassis. Yeah. I, I don't think they really did a whole lot of publicity on it. Yeah. Like, no. I, I, mean, I knew because I talked to him and asked him what it was, and, and he told me. Yes. Um, yeah. So if you look I, I on the was, dirt on dirt yeah. on the race wire, it says, I don't have it pulled up, but it says Overton, Brandon Overton's Wells chassis by Wells is – Sponsored by, you know what I mean? Like, I thought it was still going to say, or not, Wells chassis or Overton's. Wells and Son, just sponsored by Wells and Son. <laughs> or I thought, I just was surprised to see that. I didn't realize. I thought he was still, you yeah, know, poo pooing so, away I, from I that, you know? I don't think they ever made a formal announcement, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't like, you know, but yeah, I think, I think, so, so we didn't do a whole lot of the Speed Week stuff, right? We went to All Tech, you know, racing wise, mm-hmm. but, you know, I went, I went down there. To, to East Bay uh, for a night and talked with some of them, you know, people, you know, a lot of the people I know and, uh, you know, in the media, right? I used to, when I used to work and, and cover those races and it was pretty well known that he was on his, in that they were doing, you know, it, it wasn't reported, like no one could report it, but everyone knew it was mm-hmm. his own, their own thing, right? And I, I'm thinking they just finally, by the time they told anyone yeah that's you can say that's what we're running it wasn't like an announcement it was just like okay we'll start referring to that when you know as a like it's wells chassis line. right is what they're yeah. calling it yeah. um so yeah it's a uh, uh you know and then come to find out you know watching the 
Or you sent it to us. I didn't see it on oh, Twitter. Yeah. Like, so I, this is Ryan twice Gatsby. I thought I was. Wait, yeah. Go be ahead. Before y'all say anything, I watched, you know, I kind of caught up, did a little homework, watched some videos and everything, kind of recap from the weekend. And I was like, damn, dude, Gustin is, Gustin looks hey, good. Ryan like, Gustin. Front. Ryan Gustin finished second both nights at Maquaqueta. Um, and it's then in Iowa, in Iowa, the <laughs> nifty 50, I think nifty I'm, 50. I think I'm saying it right. I think I am. Maybe. I and, um, anyway, he finished second both nights at the nifty 50. And then I, I don't know about the first night and I, and I could be wrong. Did he finish second both nights? I hope I'm right about that. They are talking about not being a dummy and I might end up being one. He finished second the the big night saturday night and in victory lane they said something about this longhorn chassis and he said oh no 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 longhorn, no longhorn. this is this is, he said i think he referred to it as a, a wells car yeah um and then thanked him for you know um believing in him and putting him in one or something along those lines um but like you said it's like oh that's pretty good for him to go run second you yeah. know, or up front both nights and then oh by the way it's yeah. not a longhorn it's a it's a wells chassis so now it's like second both nights okay good i was right about that so now I mean, it's like now we got to talk about chassis and is this going to be something and and I, for I don't know there for a little while a couple of years ago and and I mean still the case you know the Wells Longhorn by Wells were the ones to have that's what you know Overton was winning in a lot of other guys too and is it like you get, are all those guys going to be in Wells chassis now you know you're going to see a shift I mean I think Gustin did a, a hell of a job like representing. You know, yeah. like someone else besides the house driver, you know, Brandon Overton, mm -hmm. to get one, then go out there and run like he did right out the gate. That's if they're if if Wells are trying to sell chassis, I think that uh, Gustin did a good job of uh, representing for him. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That also, but then also you add on that that Overton, you know, had a good weekend one Friday night and you know second to mcdowell which is you know it's not bad obviously saturday at taswell and it's like okay who's gonna pop up next in one that's that's what i'm wondering yeah. you know yeah, what i mean it, it yeah and then you got these uh, you got bmf chassis now like hedgecock i would argue that hedgecock would have would have been the standout regional guy if he didn't get in a wreck in the heat race or whatever happened because he was oh, fast he had, uh, early uh, and 75 he had, right yes he i arguably Oh, if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his butt either. But he would have been the standout, I think, over the weekend for a regional driver. Yeah, that, that's a good point, actually, because I mentioned, you know, uh, um, the Carpenter almost, you know, running second at, yeah. at Why Not and not being. But, like, yeah, to me, um, uh, Corey Hedgecock, if he'd have won that race at I-75, you know, or e any of those races really would have been, oh, you know, yes, that would have been a the prime example of what used to happen all the time in the in the sport was guys like him regional guys winning a big enough race and enough of them um you know make enough noise to be recognized nationally right mm -hmm. you just don't see that very often anymore but yeah, well that would, that would have been that that an example yeah. of that so right. what we're getting at there is obviously he's in the bmf car so you're seeing something come along yeah, there right as and well then, and then we're talking about this wells chassis that's coming along and competing and being up front I don't know. I think the the interesting thing there. So we were talking about the tires a second ago. It's interesting to watch and see. Okay, who's going to win on American Racers this week? You know what yeah. I mean. <laughs> um, and then also be interesting to see who's going to be the next guy that pops up and is in a Wells chassis that you thought was a Longhorn. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Any predictions? Oh, who would be next? Yeah. Golly, Dale McDowell. I, no, he's not even in a Longhorn. You dummy. Well, in, you, you hear those you, you, okay, have do, a little do, Bloomquist influence. Oh, right? I think I did and hear that. Do you see Easy Go on Brandon Overton's car <sighs> and Dale McDowell's car? Now there, you're there's doing. A, there's a there's a connection there. I now you're be doing. Oh, and now we're they talked we're about speculating. How, they talked about how good buddies they are in Victory Lane, and it was like McDowell was happy he passed him. It seemed like <laughs> at I seventy five, that they were just you know all yeah. buddy buddy about it more so than i would have been if i'd have gotten passed on the last lap anyway uh <laughs> i don't know that's all interesting interesting stuff what else was interesting from the weekend um um rtj oh yeah. so i know uh we i think we mentioned this how he had a an off weekend at a top brownstown and atomic right and then he goes i don't i think his, his next race was then 
this past weekend, right? He went from Brownstown. Did he race? Am I missing? Anyway, he goes to the Nippy 50 and finishes seventh on Friday night, which by his standards is definitely another off night, right? And then, well, is it his standards or is the standards that we have set for him? I, well, they posted on, he was a post on his Facebook how they were just off at the Brownstown Atomic oh, okay. Weekend. Okay. You know, I don't yeah. remember exactly the exact terminology. Seven, you said he was seventh on the opening. I'm, night. I'm talking mm-hmm. about the seventh. Yeah, no, that is definitely below his standards. Like, I mean, there's, you know, if you're comparing it to, la- you know, last year and also the way he started the year, you would, again, that's not even a, you know, national tour race. I mean, yes, there was a lot of national tour guys there, but I wouldn't, you know, a, a Lucas Oil race is going to have more, uh, heat, right. I would think, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, that's definitely below what his standards. So <laughs> I think what we're getting at is the fact that he bounced back on Saturday kind of quieted the idea of it being a slump right right you know we're talking about three races atomic brownstown at least that i can remember and then this one you know friday right. night there and then he wins on saturday so you know it's not really a slump it was just I mean, three bad races and that bad just he wasn't quite the where we, we expect him right? three off races uh anybody want to we got help with the pronunciation from brandon mitchell here i appreciate the two dollars brandon by the way ma calcutta ma calcutta Mo yeah, that sounds good. Mo Calcutta. Mo Calcutta. Okay. There you go. So we now know it. Maybe, we, maybe it's like it. we need a reminder every time we talk about it. Appreciate yeah, that, I'm Brandon. Good. Thank you for the two dollars as well. Anyway, I thought it was is I don't know exactly how this all played out, but um and I should have went back, should have gone back and read the Facebook post, but they in the Facebook post they had I think the car had been at Longhorn. They put it back together and they just something was off, you know, according to at Brownstown and Atomic. And then I'm not even sure if that's the same car. I don't know. I'm just speculating. But he was definitely, like we said, had a little bit of an off night um, Friday night at the Nippy 50 as well. Goes in victory lane. He said he went to the backup car on Saturday. And then all of a sudden, he's the RTJ that uh, that we yeah. you know expect him to be. Oh, wait, so Saturday when he won? He was gone to his backup car. Okay, well, that explains it. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Over that other car. <laughs> Yeah, there's still something they haven't found there, yeah. <laughs> apparently. Maybe, I, maybe you turn your backup car to your primary at this point. Yeah, possibly. Um, I mean, we when Joseph's best run, you know, when we went to Alltech and, and Joseph tried to race RTJ for the lead, ended up finishing sixth in the Lucas race there. That was our what we consider our backup car, you know. Hey, and honestly, we've won more races with our backup car than we have our primary at this point. Anyway, so I just thought that was interesting because because sometimes you feel that way. It's like, it's like something just isn't right here. You know what yeah. I mean? You go to the other car or whatever, and and you fit, and you know it was like, yep. You, I don't know. That could who knows, but that seemed to be the case. Uh, Carlos Johnson, thank you for the dollar ninety nine first uh, um, stick first uh, super, super there. Thank you, Car- uh, Carlos and Michael Burns. Great podcast, fellas. We appreciate it. Thank you for the uh, the super chat. Uh, Michael, glad you uh, glad you are enjoying it. Glad all of you are here listening to us. We talk racing yeah. a lot, but so it's pretty cool to be able to sit down and actually do it with folks who are listening, other yeah. than ourselves. Um, <laughs> yeah, true. Anyway, uh, my point there is, I bet you see RTJ get um, get get rolling pretty good here. So you yeah. saw over at the Nippy Fifty Pierce, we talked about it. I think I don't remember who predicted what exactly. Um, but we said pretty much it was going to be the Pierce and RTJ show, and it was. So I think you're going to see. Um, I'm just calling it now. Now that RTJ seems to have figured something something out, you're going to see them pick back up, and it's going to be the RTJ and Pierce show this year, like it was last year. Yeah, it, it was a pretty good race, uh, actually. Saturday, it, you know that place reminds me of Brownstown, like the no walls. You can kind of fall off the track a little bit. When I was watching the video, it reminded me of Brownstown, and uh, Bobby actually. Do a couple sliders at yeah, Ricky he, to, to, he for the race like for early, the lead. Looked like early, then, he was going to have something just, for him, and then he faded. Yeah. I don't know. It was hey, a decent race though. Carlos Johnson again with the four ninety nine. Your guy's number one fan. Well, we appreciate that, Carlos. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning right. in. What's next on the agenda, fellas? Hey, let's uh, let's uh, real quick. Let's talk about um, Clarksville. That was on the, oh, yeah. on the front TV, so that was pretty cool for us to be able to have. Um, anytime we can have uh, two, um, 
you know, to do something new. This is a fit. Multi streams at Dual the same streams, time. Like the uh, pianos, yeah, piano on part. Hunt the Front TV. First of all, it worries me that something might might break because that just seems like that's not something we should be capable of. Um, but then secondly, you know, it kind of makes you proud, you know, that, that we're, you know, providing the second mo- time we've done that. I know, yeah. Okay. Time, I was so. thinking that, uh, but anyway, so we so. had, we were at Southern raceway and I had hunt the front TV pulled up. Cause I mean, we're parked close to the track, but I don't want to have to walk to the other side of the trailer to look at the track. So I always have it, you know, wherever we're racing, if there's a stream, I'm gonna have it on my iPad. Um, so I had the hunt the front TV on my iPad and then I also had Joshua had pulled up on his phone Clarksville. So we had both of them going there on hunt the front TV. That was pretty cool. Um, and then also, uh, pretty interesting at Clarksville, um, winger gets the win Friday night and Blair Saturday night, but I didn't even realize like I've seen, um, a lot of pictures I feel like of Dennis Herb jr. And victory lane there, but I didn't realize they gave an actual toilet to the winner. Oh yeah. Oh, never yeah. as a trophy i don't remember remember that i saw the oh, one of yeah. of max sitting on the the the, th- the porcelain throne there and i'm like oh that's interesting anyway yeah. they gave away one to a fan too oh they really a wrap to- it's, it's a legit toilet like it is like a, a real, real toilet, toilet that they wrap or yeah, paint they or wrap something and make it the trophy so like if you were to win it you know like you could put it in the bathroom at your shop install it and be the toilet you know or your house whatever so <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's a pretty unique trophy. I mean, <laughs> so I know Clarksville's got a deal worked out um, to sell, but they got a couple more years, right? Yeah. We, we need to get up there so Joseph can, or Jesse, one of them, the can trophy. win us a toilet. Uh, BJ Woolbright, thanks for the uh, the super chat there. Will HTF be at Buckshot Friday for the Spring Nationals race? When did Southern All Star start allow an American racer tires? Uh, yet uh, I, I did y'all make a decision for Buckshot? Uh, I think the plan as of right now is me and Joseph both are going to race. I'm going to run in the 604 division, and Joseph will be running the supers. Obviously, that's yeah. the plan as of right now, unless something comes up. But that is the uh, that is the plan right now. And that is Friday night at Buckshot. It's Spring Nationals race. Overton's leading the points, I believe. I think he's running for their points, so he'll be there. Well, I think it. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he's, he's running for their points, he is. So I think it has something to do with the tires he's running too. So uh, okay, yeah, I think that I, I could be wrong, but I that's what I heard is he's running for their uh, points. So. Well, the interesting thing there, as y'all know, is Joseph is undefeated there. <laughs> um, so we'll have to when we get him on the HDF Nation podcast later in the week, and we get Joseph on, we'll have to ask him, does that worry him uh, with with Overton coming? He's undefeated hey. there, but he's never raced Overton there. I don't. I doubt Overton's ever even been there, but uh, I think that steps it up a little bit. We might we, we might have to invest in some. Never mind. I ain't gonna go there. Um, <laughs> uh, when did Southern All Stars start allowing American racer tires? I think last have year. they all? Oh, was they, it last they year? They did it last year. Yeah. Okay. There you go. But yeah, they were also yeah. last year allowing thirteen fifties and crate twenty ones. Yeah. Yeah. Was, At one point, you had like it was like. The, like 12 different compounds on a given, you know, you could run mm-hmm. on a given race night, like between the crate tires, the 1350s, the twos and threes, and the American racers at one point, you know. Well, you so could run anything on the left there. front. Is that, I don't even know, is that what they That's have? the way it was all last year. It was open. Open, open yeah. left front, yeah. just basically whatever. Yeah, as long as it was a, you know. Brown rubber and rolls. You got it. Yeah. You um, got it. <laughs> no, we got it. Yeah, that was the commercial. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we, not for sure, but we're going to try our best to be at Buckshot. Well, we got to yep. we got to make sure that uh, we got our stuff ready um, for the following week. Is all yeah. tech with a doubleheader there with the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series, so we can't not be prepared for that. Um, okay. We got some other things coming down the pipe, uh, some changes and some things coming that we got to situate, and if we can get all that situated, then – yeah, we'll probably be at Buckshot Friday, and then yep. we'll play it by ear for East Alabama as well. I don't like, yeah, we we really yeah. got a lot of things we got to get done business wise. Like, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking that, that just y'all don't see on the videos House and stuff, keeping. housekeeping stuff that we just a lot yeah. of stuff we got to get situated um, before all tech, and we're hoping to jump in the toter and get to Buckshot, and then have to get right back and get right back to work. That makes yeah. sense. That that sums yeah, that, that makes up. Makes sense. Uh, uh, Go, Go ahead. ahead. I, I ain't got nothing, Jesse. What do you got? All right. I, I got something for you guys. So, I, right. I, you know, I was doing my homework, watching some races, and I was watching that, my whatever, the Nippy 50, right? 
was watching the Nippy 50, watched a couple other tracks and series Schaefer's, and then obviously the Southern All Stars. And what I noticed is, is there's a lot of differences or a uh, there, there's not the same formatting when it comes to true double file restarts or the Delaware Delaware double file restarts. And I was wondering, what is y'all's take on it? Because we race Southern Raceway with the true double file restarts, no leader out front, no, was, no you know, the Southern All Star rules. Yep. And mm-hmm. then the spring, the the Shapers Nationals was the leader out front, and then the mama, the Nippy Fifty, was <laughs> true double file restarts. Um, after watching it, so I was wondering, like, what is y'all's take on it? You know, like, have you did you guys notice that at all, or have you put any thought into it? Yeah, I I've always liked the the Dell. I feel like if the leader is the leader, he he he's earned the right to start out front by himself to me. See, but I also grew up like when we grew up and then a lot of places still race this way, your support divisions. So I grew up running street stock, modified hobby stock, all that. We always started single file. So if I could just get to the lead, I was pretty confident. Most of the time I could keep everybody behind me. So I have a natural little bit of a inclination toward the leader, at least having, you know, the front row to himself. So, yeah. I don't know why, but I know Southern All Stars went to it last year to true double file restarts. I think um, All Tech, uh, you know, down there, Wendell Durance, he's notorious for wanting double file rest, true double file restarts. And um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess for the fans, maybe Eldora it makes has done it. Eldora, yeah, it does double file restarts. I, I don't necessarily. I'm not. I, I like the Delaware double file when it comes to to restarts, putting the leader out front, letting him choose, make the second place guy have to fight the third place guy. I yeah. guess, or, or make the second place guy make the right decision on where to be. You know, mm-hmm. like he could make a bad choice. I think uh, my thing is, the, I don't mind the the double file, the true double file, if it's done 100 percent correct, right? Where you know the the leader you know 100 fired you know like like fire first yeah not like like there's two um some of the series that are doing and places yeah. that are doing uh double file um there's you, you i don't trust you gotta be people. strict on yes, the second I place car them to you know to like uh you know to 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 let the you know at least i don't know this year's a little better it's, but I, I know last year there were some instances where i'm like that just that's not they don't need to be doing double file they're not even policing their they're not policing their resources no. right mm-hmm. and you're just giving the guy in second place a chance to you know to you're, you're li- games, I, right? I, I think and, it's literally catering to second place yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. that's what that is it's catering um, to second place well i'll like, say again go ahead well i was gonna say two points is if you have your your officials policing it mm-hmm. enough to know that you you know it's not just one person in the tower you know 300 400 feet away i'm um, never been good at estimating distances but how far is the race director in the tower away m- making that call you need someone literally standing there at the cone right and you say and, and then the way we do it on the series is you have the person in the infield standing there right at the cones watching you have the flagman watching and we have travis scott our race director watching right and so you know if we chose to do double file i would you know i, I would feel like we could make sure the leader fired first mm-hmm. um in that situation but a lot of places don't do that it's one person and they might not have the best angle on it. Uh, but the other thing is uh, there's a lot of tracks that do not need like, like all tech raceway, one of the raciest tracks when it's, when it's good, you know, like mm-hmm. every track it sometimes is, you know, has some, you know, can uh, get one lane, but not, you know, most of the time it's wide enough and racy enough that yeah, start double file. They're not, yeah. gonna, they're not going to run all over each other, but mm-hmm. you know, a lot of tracks in the South, especially whenever, you know, and you put the, get the second place guy and the chance to get the lead on the start, and it's one lane, he's going to do something crazy in turn one, right? Yeah. Like, and you're setting it up for, you know, for drama and disaster. Yeah. Wrecking in front of the field. Like <laughs> I, mean, I guess. How many times do we have to go single file on tracks? Yeah, because it's, right. you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's just, well, you know, that's so. honestly, that's the way it was Friday night at um, Southern. There was a caution yep. and there was like nine laps to go and it's supposed to be double file all the way until five to go. And I'm like, crap, we're about to start, you know, double file. Um here on then there they went single file because it was rubbered in single lane so at yeah. least they made that decision uh My good point is, i'm from, not saying i'm not I'm just real quick much to, to okay. reiterate i'm not saying it's wrong and you shouldn't do it i'm just saying it should got to be the right circumstances you know and that's why uh, our series 
you know, we go to enough places where I just don't feel like it, we're quite ready for that to go to true double file all the time. Right. Um, but you never know, it may change in the future. Thank BJ, BJ raises yeah. a really good point. Uh, yeah. Appreciate the super chat again, BJ. Guys, we're in the south below the Mason Dixon line. It is Dixie double file. The yeah, Dixie well, double file restart. That is that a is true, solid but point. I, I, it was that, originated. It was always Delaware. Right. Way, what it, track in came, Delaware was it? Listen, I have I'm Delaware International, maybe. I don't, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's the only one you know. No, there's <laughs> another one up there. I've actually been to Delaware International. Um, but uh, and I th- I'm pretty sure that's where I think they – it seems like they remember mm-hmm. saying that's where it came from, whatever. But my point is, is, like, the Delaware double file restart, like, really was cool, right? And when it came – when it changed – like, to me, I mean, I get it. Oh, we're in the south. It's Dixie. But, no, it can't – like, it was the cool thing. Like that, It'll always be known to me as the Delaware double file restart. There ain't many things I know from De- Delaware – or about Delaware, but you know, when, when I first heard about it and, oh, wow, they do that, that makes things interesting. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, second place guy that gets to choose. So, um, you know, kudos to them if that's where it originated and where it came from, I think they deserve to be, you know, they deserve um, to get the, the, yeah, get the, the, the spot. Uh, well, Hey, one other thing that I just thought of about that Georgetown topic speedway, that's the other track in Delaware that I've, I've heard of. Georgetown. Maybe it originated there. Maybe. <laughs> um, so the other thing about that is I see talking about people, race directors not policing restarts very well what i do see happen a lot is guys that so if the leader is out front delaware dixie whatever you want to call it style restart he's got one lane he's blocking one car well the car that is not directly behind him cheats up or takes off and so you end up with the guy who you know whichever way the leader went the guy behind him gets held up and the other guy gets to jump and so i will say that the True double file restart takes that out of the equation. Remember the modified race at East Bay? Oh yeah, yes. uh, Troutman and, and the, wasn't that a situation uh, yeah. of that? Yeah. Where and, and everybody mm-hmm. like it was just everybody back and forth on Facebook he about he start. jumped or he didn't jump. No, and it's, it's, it was pretty clear he was beside the leader when right. they fired, which. I don't want to get into that listen, old rant. Listen, Josh, but I'm just telling pretty you, clear because there was a hell of a riot. About yeah, it, it was like if it, for two days straight. That's all I was seeing on Facebook was people arguing over this restart. Well, that was supposed to be a Delaware double file restart that wasn't policed well, right? Yeah. Um, or was it? Did they penalize him or did they not? They did. He, they, they did. The okay, so it was and they policed well after it was over because it was a yeah. restart with just okay. handful race laps to go. Listen, well, a lot of times you I'm, don't see that that policing yeah. happen. It's right. true. And, it's, it goes and, both ways. It's mm-hmm. got to be policed whether it's true double file or Delaware. I just hate for the race to be decided on a restart um, when, the to me, the leader has earned the right to be out front. And by putting the second place guy you know, up beside him, at least if it's not policed, that well on a Delaware double file, you're probably not going to place it well on the other advantage on the guy, but the second or third place guy, not an advantage not the leader. on the leader. Right, right. I see. So that's why I tend to, unless I am 100% confident in the officials to police it and make sure it's done correctly, why I think, you know, it, it needs to be, and also the track, you know, lends itself to, you know, that, you know, that, that situation uh, where I think it's, um, Delaware, I, Delaware for me, like I land. But if we're voting, I'm not, I'm not I saying vote it's Delaware. I'm saying it's it's opening a can of worms, you know. And you'd hate to see a guy lose it, lose a race on a restart that wasn't policed correctly, or because the track's kind of you know not not as racy as you'd like, and you put the second place guy beside him, right? Like, mm-hmm. That's my take. Because I think I feel like a guy is a lot less likely to try something crazy when it's just racing for second versus racing for the lead, right? Yeah. So. But that's my take. I could be, you know, I'm not saying yeah. it's wrong one way or the other. I'm just saying that's. I vote Delaware if that's what we were asking. Yeah. Long ways. I, I, long story I vote short. Delaware. Well, I honestly, I think if we were Delaware, we wouldn't have uh, gotten fourth on Saturday. So, uh, I a, mean, if we, if, we were Delaware, if we were Delaware, we would have gotten third or better. Possibly went to second. I'm just saying. That's what this is all about. Sorry. No, well, it just made me think about it because I was watching these other races and I noticed that, that that race up there, the Nippy 50, was was true double file. I thought it was a Southern All-Star, yeah, you know, kind of Eldor crap. Eldor does it that way, too. And then, so. I know. That's NASCAR. So cool. Hey, apparently I, there's a big argument I, in NASCAR about jumping a restart, Denny Hamlin or something. Oh, yeah, i seen some stuff about well, he that. He was the leader. Uh, you know, yeah, he went like, five feet but early. They, but they have them. a start box. They have yeah. a start starting zone. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole other topic. Uh, speaking of NASCAR, I did want to ask you all this. Did you see Bubba Pollard made yeah. his uh, first Bush Series start? 
Yeah. It's not Bush series. series. Is that still Xfinity? <laughs> I was going to see if any of y'all would laugh at me. Yeah. Xfinity series uh, start. I was, uh, this is the first Xfinity series uh, race I've watched since it was the Bush series. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, were we at the race? Where were we at when me and we, you were I, watching? We were, you were grooving a tire in the trailer. Oh, that's right. We were at and the I races and we were like, let's watch Bubba. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, so I was all excited about it. And um, it was funny because I woke up Saturday morning and I guess they practiced at like eight o'clock in the morning Saturday. And so the first thing I see when I wake up is Bubba Pollard fastest in practice. Right. And then the next thing I see, like literally scrolling down the next post is he's like last in qualifying. So I got all, I got all excited. I'm going to watch that. He's going to qualify up front. I'm going to watch that today. And then he qualifies in the back. So I'm worried, you know, I'm like, oh man, so much for that. So then I kind of keep up with it. I look at, check on it on the way to the track and he's worked his way from 37th to like 18th. So anyway, I pull it up. Me and Jesse watched it right there while he's grooving a tire and he finished sixth. First yeah. Xfinity Series start. What Impressive happened bro. in qualifying for him to go from second fastest in practice to... No, fastest, fastest in... Fastest, I thought it was yeah. second fastest. He's second he's fastest. from last in qualifying, yeah. I believe. Uh, I'm not, so, something detrimental happened Yeah, in qualifying. I know in his interview he said something about I said it's behind in qualifying. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, Bob Pollard's one of those guys, you know, obviously he's been around for a long time and I don't know much about asphalt late model racing. I don't know much about pavement racing. It's where you got your start in journalism. Yeah, well, eh, you know, but I mean, well, he's just a guy that's been around it forever, you know, and never had that I know of, you know, really given a shot at the big time. Right. And, you know, you see him go in there and I mean, I, you know, that's, that's pretty solid. Right. Like, mm -hmm. um, hopefully, you know, maybe it leads to more. I, I think he's got a few more. No, races. I don't. I don't think so. Oh, really? No, that's no, not, not the way they. Made, I have no idea. But the way that he made it sent when you know the way it sounded, it was that one deal. And if he 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 said something, I don't remember what he said, Jesse. Something about you know if anybody out there wants to sponsor a car, <laughs> if anybody, yeah, if anybody else wants to sponsor me, you know, we'll keep digging. But basically, <laughs> he he's done. That was his yeah. one and one and done. Well, if nothing else, I mean, that's still pretty cool, right? Like a yeah, I'm sure something he's you know, yeah. uh you know, wanted to do, do and have the opportunity to do for a long time. And I would say he, you know, did pretty well when he given that opportunity. Yeah. So hopefully it leads to more for him. So for those yeah. that don't know, he's a Bubba Pollard's asphalt racer. Um, and he feels kind of like a local guy to us because he races at Five Flags so much right down the road from us. Uh, he's from Sonoya. They're, the family owns Sonoya Raceway in Georgia. But um, where we know him from is yeah. the asphalt racing at five flags but then also he's done quite a bit of dirt racing i don't, I don't guess he's done much Jesse lately have a foot race against not with him no, no it was no, his no, no, crew no. guy no. Oh, yeah crew it was guy. his crew guy um, yeah okay heck, that, that was a long time that's ago. all to say that's been almost 10 years ago now yeah. after one of yeah. the one of the big crate races at southern afterward they uh foot raced and yeah, we had a damn good time. We partied down that yeah. night. That was fun. <laughs> he he might have grown out of it by now, but he, that, was, that was anyway. <laughs> um, so that was, that was, oh, and the other thing, apparently, um, I didn't see this. I missed it in the actually watching it live, but I saw a replay of, um, crap, I wrote his name down so I, I would remember it. But a fella got wrecked and he backed in. He got spun out, right, at Richmond in that same race that Bubba Pollard was in. He gets spun out, backs it into the wall. He's sitting there, gets out of the car, and his bumper's hanging off, like barely attached, like about to fall on the ground. Just the aluminum or whatever they use. He peel, peels it off, grabs it. Now, he don't even have his gloves on. Peels it off, and as the guy that spun him out is coming by, he throws it at him, like the whole back and it covering. <laughs> lands across his windshield. Perfectly. Perfect throw. <laughs> so, I have not seen, how have I not seen this? Dude, it's crazy. It was I'm like, like a direct really, hit. This guy's <laughs> never going to drive up. a race car again. No. They're going to find him, Gase. suspend him. G-A-S-E, is that the guy's name? Gase, yeah, G-A-S-E. Yep, something Gase. Joey Gase, I think was okay. his name. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, he just rips, grabs the bumper. And the funny thing is, like, dude, you're going to cut your hands. You know, yeah. that's like when I was watching it for the first time, that's what I thought, oh, wow. Larry. I'm yeah, you pulling it. it you got He's yanking it off. Like, it looks like just, uh, it's got to be like aluminum or. I mean, yeah, there's no telling the track here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> just threw it at him. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> yeah, does he get fined, suspended? Uh, probably. I mean, yeah. Uh, what probably. is that? Like, 
carries and hit someone, you know, type or, deal. I, mean, I think the worry there is you're running toward a car. Like, that too. <laughs> I mean, what, anyway, a lot of dangers involved yeah. there that, while well, it didn't, you know, it was kind of funny. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a hefty fine. Yeah. That's one of those where it's like, I, 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 we were looking at it or we were watching TV or whatever. And I'm, of course, on my phone. I'm like, babe, look at this. Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Look at it. Look at it right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you, what else we got? Um, I don't know. We I had a lot of things jotted down to touch on here, but we got uh long yeah, winded on topic. some things. Got what off about, topic. Um, what about Hudson O'Neill? Oh yeah, Dude, it's kind yeah. of uh, quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. It, what, what are we? What are our thoughts? Like you, I seventy five. You hear Hudson O'Neill? You know all that he's done the past year. You know, obviously one of the, feel like one of the best drivers in the country over the mm -hmm. past year or so, and um teaming up with uh with rumley and to drive that car and you know what are the expectations you know versus kind of you know, what he's uh, done yeah i mean what's so on that? like i mean i don't want to... was he like seventh and sixth or um i don't know he's i-75 uh, with the I spring nationals was, but, so are they... they teamed up they teamed up for brownstown and atomic where he was sixth atomic was running right around fifth right before he had the yeah flat. had the flat yeah and, and seemed to be maybe making some, you know, getting rolling there at Atomic. Yeah. Like, he could have even done better. And then he goes to I-75 and Tazewell for the, the Spring Nationals races in his seventh and sixth. And granted, I honestly have not, other than the last lap or last two laps of I-75, I have not, I did not do my homework and go watch mm -hmm. these races. Um, but that's not, just not what you'd expect, right? Like, you know, kind of. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I, like, I, go ahead. Jesse, this past weekend, I'm not. I mean, this isn't really his stomping grounds where he just raced like Hudson O'Neill's. I mean, like, he drove, I how long did he drive for, uh, for Double Down right there? Out of yeah, right out of Tennessee. Surely yeah, they some some. I don't know if he. I'd have to look, man. He's I'm been not, on that style know. of track for sure. Yeah. That that red clay. Yeah. Um, I I don't. I mean, yeah, you you'd like for him. Right, he's had four races now. You would have liked to have seen him really been in contention. Um, yeah. in one of them, but at the same time, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I feel like, you know, that maybe that whole deal was thrown together a little bit, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't know for sure, but there's, you've always heard that's like an R and D type of situation, maybe something, you know, so who even knows what they're, what they're working well, I, with, they're working on. The car has found victory lane with Carl, Kyle Larson. Like the mm -hmm. car, the, ca the car's capable great. of winning. Yeah. yeah. And like, and it feels like wherever you put, larson in it pretty about about wherever he was competitive mm -hmm. and good right, right. and I, I don't know you just you just felt like you felt like when that that team up happened potentially you know okay they might go win the lucas oil title right mm -hmm. and you know go on a historic run like when davenport was in that car and you know and everything and um you just i'm not saying it couldn't happen i mean he'd go to volunteer they got it on their schedule with the xr series this week and run well and win it and who knows like you know it, it changed in an instant with one big oh, win yeah. or you know, street there, but as so far, it hadn't felt like they've had that, you know, that, that just been a little below the expectations maybe. Right. When you run with a pairing like that. Right. Basically. Yeah. But, uh, so who knows? I mean, it's still interesting to see. I still don't think they've said if that's permanent, you know, that's not permanent or we don't know the, or what the situation is. They haven't said, but I got the feeling it wasn't, you know, and from, right. but, you know, this is going back to them, you know, kind of announcing or whatever, being at um, Brownstown and atomic. So who knows, but I got the feeling then that that wasn't, it, it wasn't the, the, the permanent ride for the, the rest of the year. Um, but I don't know. It just, you, you would like to see them have, like I said, done, done something. I mean, made a little more noise, at least been in the con contention for, for a race win. But I, I don't know. I wasn't shocked, you know, both nights when, when you see him sixth or seventh or whatever. But just like you probably wouldn't be shocked if, like you said, they turn around and win it. Um, right. Volunteer. Volunteer. This weekend. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, if you go to volunteer and it, it, so did, what did Larson do there? Is that where him him and JD, when was that that they were that back in the flow race, right? Where they changed. Was that last year? Yeah, that was, you, you had like within a week of each other or 10 mm -hmm. days of each other, you had flow uh, there and then you had XR Hector. coming there and the flow race was like slider after like right you know this epic race so, with uh, Larson and Davenport what I'm saying though was large yeah it was Davenport and Larson what I'm saying though is Larson was obviously in contention you know at Volunteer in that uh, you know I don't know if it's the same car or what but you know in that, in that ride, ride that team yeah. uh, so you would like to think that you know they can they can sort that out no uh, Hudson 
could have the same potential to go there and and compete for a win. At least, you know, for sure. Given you would have thought, if you know, six nights together, that 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 pairing could, if not get a win, at least be compete competing for, for one. Right. So we'll see uh, how that goes this weekend with the fifth and sixth race. If they don't win one of these races, that one of the XR races is a doubleheader. Don't win one it's of those. So, it's a disappointment. No, no I think you no. were trying to you were trying to get us to say that already, and I'm not prepared to. Just... But I might be more prepared to if if he's so so again this week. Uh, you know, so so he's been so so right, or I don't know whatever. What do you want? Mediocre. You know, I mean, not bad. He's been okay. He's been in he's the been top okay. ten every race. Yeah, he's been you know, okay. But he's been okay. But you know, you you want that bunch that group. It's like all right, they need to put something together and go. Show everybody that you know between the with that driver and that that crew chief or or engineer whatever you want to call it that they can make things happen. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do it this weekend. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, here's another one coming out of Tennessee. I can't. Ooh, I can't. We almost. I know. You know where I'm going with this? I know where you're going with this one? Was my pick at your boy at, uh, Scott at, at uh. I pick it at Tazewell. Tazewell. He, was, he was good. I, I told you, don't good. sleep on Bloomquist. Don't don't sleep on Bloomer. Don't sleep on Zero. Uh, and I so, had some inside information from the team that he was he was on keel. He was ready. So he so. gets a top five. Scott Bloomquist gets a top five finish at Tazewell against a pretty pretty tough pretty good group of cars. Um, I think he won a heat race. And um, I did actually go back and watch the Tazewell feature. And he looked, I mean, he looked good. He ran third. For a lot of it, um, Hedgecock got by him, and then I believe it was McIntosh, I think, ends up fourth, gets by him. But uh looks pretty good. But I will say the argument there is going to be the, de- the 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 detractors are going to say, well, yeah, it's East Tennessee. It's Taswell. Like, he can drive around there with his eyes closed. I mean, Taswell's not like – I mean, I know it wasn't like hammer down Taswell like you're, you know – uh, you know, kind of wide open, hammer down, but it, it, that place still is elbows up, mm-hmm. and that's kind of even slow. It's fast. Yeah, that's even what I'm slow. It's and fast. That's, yeah, and that's that could not be a really slogan for him. He's, you know, as Scott, you know, with his uh, shoulder issue, and um, as he's gotten, you know, past his prime a little bit, you know, that's not a place you expect him to go and and be real, real good, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking, like, I mean. I, I don't know. I just think that shows that he's, you know, like the, you know, up, elbows up, bullring style he can still do, right? Like, and I know it wasn't, you know, typical Taswell, at least not in the feature. I actually got the highlights pulled up here, and t- it's clearly a little bit slower and slicker than usual. Um, but that still shows that he can, you know, he can race with these guys, right? Mm-hmm. Still got something for him. So. It was also a 75-lap race, I believe. That's so. true. Long race, yep, and held in there. So, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, he's- I don't... Yeah, I, he's hey, back. I don't think we're ready to say he's back. You know, he's coming back. He's yeah, stepping he's in the right capable. direction. He's still capable, is what we'll say. So I'm assuming he's going to volunteer this week, right? Oh yeah, I'm sure. And then really? hopefully he gets out of there without tearing anything up, and he's going to well, supposedly come into All Tech in two that's weeks. What I was going to say we'd really like to have him at All Tech, and he's, <laughs> that's still the plan as as of now. To and he didn't have a great start on the uh, HTF series. Uh, there at Talladega, um, with a you know run in with the cushion and um, you know DNF, but uh, he's still the plan as of now is for them to still stay at it with HDF series and be at All Tech, and then of course from there we go up to East Tennessee, you know Smoky Mountain two weeks later. So um, I think you know I think All Tech when I talk about you know this era of Scott Bloomquist, right? Like it's probably the slower, slicker, you know, longer tracks. I, you would think, you know, it might be a little better for him, and Alltech would be a perfect place to kind of test that theory, right? Mm-hmm. For him to go there, um, and maybe, you know, and he's he's uh, good at big tracks. Look at Eldora. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he does there in a couple of weeks. Obviously, get through get through volunteer with the the XR series, and hopefully make it down there. So. Well, I think regardless, I mean, obviously we we want to see him do well because we want to see him run the the whole series. Uh, the HTF series and and there are a lot of unknowns with with Scott and, and the health issues and and you know I know they're still you know putting things together with the team equipment wise um, but I think in general and so we will, my point there is you know we have a little bit of an interest in hoping he gets <laughs> things rolling and gets going well but I think the sport you know itself I think you, you just want to see him 
you know, you, I, you don't, you want him to come back and make another, another run. Unless he, you're he, just a Bloomquist hater, which, you know, those yeah. people are out there. Scott Bloomquist needs to thrive a little bit at some level. That's to mm-hmm. some degree that matters. It'd be good for the sport. I agree. I 100% I agree. I think it's cool too, though, because like Tennyson was at, um, Talladega, right? And then you kind of had quite a few. Bloomquist was there, parked not too far from us. Um, so, you know, Tennyson, my son, is kind of like, well, who, he, I mean, he knows who Bloomquist is, but, you know, he doesn't see Bloomquist as much. Because when you watch races, you don't, you know what I mean? Like, he's he's not racing as much. So it's cool to be like, yeah, that's Scott Bloomquist. You know, it might have been the, I don't know. He was at Eldora, so I'm um, sure. Uh, Scott was racing then, but it's one of the first times where I'm like, you need to, you know, watch him because you know he's a Hall of Famer. He's a he's one of the great. He's the goat. You know, you don't you're not going to get very many chances to watch him race. You know, is what right. I was telling my son. So that was pretty cool and and cool that he's you, you like to see him do it for a few more years for sure. Yeah. Well, and and like it's one thing like you know we were fortunate to get to you know watch him in his prime. Right. Mm-hmm. Grew up with whenever he was literally in his prime and. And, you know, really even, you know, as kids and then even as adults, you know, getting in, you know, he was still really good and winning. I mean, still was prime and t- until, you know, just a few years ago. Um, so you kind of don't kind of like Michael Jordan, right? You didn't want to see that go away, you know, and you don't realize how fortunate you are to get to watch, you know, someone of that level. Right. Until they're prime, gone. You know, making history. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's it's kind of you, you don't want to see it end, um, you know, and and. I don't know if, if, you know, if him coming and run well with the XR series at volunteer or maybe being competitive on our series, if that, you know, it's not, you know, that's not the same as him going to Eldora and winning, which he could do that this year. Who knows? But, yeah. um, you know, it's still kind of cool to see, you know, yeah. someone, and that's the difference between our sport and, you know, I think other professional sports is like if Michael Jordan, you know, had dropped down to, you know, um, <laughs> like a baseball well, he went player to the Wizards. The way, huh? What? Jordan went to the Wizards or yeah, whatever. That, that's what I mean. like, that was but like, <laughs> honestly at that point in his career, he needed to have gone to like what's the like Japan and play or not Japan, China and played right, like you know or right. or, or whatever. Like yeah, but Tom they Brady don't do that in in you know baseball or yeah, like you know, to the minors. Yeah, is not going to go down to Triple A and play for three or four more years, mm-hmm. right? And and win and set record, you know, and and do well there and. You know, it's just not going to happen, right? Right. Whereas in our sport, you know, a guy could run regionally, like you know, and run, you know, as like, like and still be meaningful, right? Yeah. Like it's still, well, and, and every now and then, jump up and that's run. That's what I was about sport, to say. So right? it, you and when know, it makes sense, and you go to where you know you're good. Scott at right. Eldora, you know, and you know, I mean, imagine if Scott went and won the Dream of the World, right? Like, it doesn't matter what he done the rest of the year. How big is that, right? Yeah. But, but see, the the minor leagues, what you're talking about, so you don't, you can't have a guy drop down from you know in the in baseball football other sports right you like really but in racing or at least in dirt late model racing scott bloomquist can run you know more more regional schedule but if he goes to eldora and competes there or if he goes to the xr race and is trying to win at volunteer or you know um what's some other i, I don't know i'm trying to think of other charlotte. examples charlotte you know at the end yeah. of the year then you know like that was a good move for him dropping down racing regionally a regional series regional events because he's getting the the time necessary the practice whatever to go and compete at the the few national events that he'll go to so it's a good opportunity i guess um and cool to see him hopefully you know take advantage of it this year and honestly like someone kind of like blunquist is moyer you know he goes out there and he's doing his thing and he's still winning races out there around his around his place you know doing a little bit lower division stuff not lower division but regional level lower more regional yeah Mm -hmm. anyway that'd be cool to see uh i'd like to see him win win some more races is all i'm saying yeah more year two what else we got we got anything else before we go uh i think i covered our picks last week did we uh, i did i went back and tag them I, i went i wanted to go back and tally them up i know i picked correctly uh the nippy 50 i said pierce friday and rtj saturday joshua picked correctly southern you said joseph friday and Bo saturday i know my southern raceway um <laughs> jesse i picked taswell correctly and i picked dale mcdowell 
to win at Tazewell. I I also picked Max Blair at Clarksville on Friday. Yeah, but he didn't win Friday, did he? He won Saturday. Crap. <laughs> That's close enough. You did say he was going to win. I said he was going at to Clarksville, win. and he did didn't win I, at Clarksville. Did I pick Zach Mitchell at Cherokee? I don't I think, think you did. did. Did you? No, Maybe. no. I, I think I said you did. Ivy. I think you picked Trent Ivy, and Joshua said Zach Mitchell. Okay. I didn't really well, weigh we'll in because we'll I didn't going to be there. Yeah. It's funny because you see like Dalton Wilson win at Ultimate, and you're like, probably should have, which I didn't, if we'd have known he was going. If you know, would have picked him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a guy that, um, you know, that's a that's a good win for him, kind of backing up the the Lucas Oil uh, win at East Bay, you know, getting that first win, then getting a, um, yeah, I don't, you know, it's not like a huge win, but it's a good one to kind of keep the momentum going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you could see that sort of sort of building on that, and, and you know, him continuing and having a breakout year, uh, winning a few more Lucas shows or 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 you know, national level shows and definitely some regional stuff. Maybe even finding himself in the top four. Possibly. Good. Whatever he could man. keep that you, momentum uh, rolling. You did. You you <laughs> reading our notes here, our show notes. You you had an interesting point about the ultimate race getting such a strong field. Yeah. Cars. Well, yeah. You see, like those North Carolina tracks, where it's usually, I feel like they're similar to us down here in that they just don't have a lot of super guys. I guess super uh, late models, and so you're used to seeing like twenty, maybe thirty cars at these super late model races in the Carolinas. And then we were looking, um, I don't remember what time, what point it was, but we were looking at the car counts Friday night while we were at Southern and it's like, dang, they got 43 cars at uh ultimate. Yeah. And I was like, that, that's in North Carolina, right? They don't ever have that many cars at a racetrack in North Carolina, do they? You know? So, uh, I don't know. Just sort of kind of, uh, blew my mind there for a second. Well, one thing I, I believe it was a thousand to start, ten thousand to win, a thousand. Oh, that to start helps for sure. That's good. Series, uh, I think was is there. I think that's their standard payout, which is pretty solid. Um, but I think you know you're also in a so that's more North Carolina in closer to Virginia area. Um, you know, so it's a different Carolina than like a Cherokee or a Lancaster or somewhere like that. Um, so there's a different group of guys there. I don't. I'm. Kind of looking at the list here. How, how about Casey Roberts third? Yeah, in that race. That's good. Don't, know, don't call it a comeback, that. but <laughs> well, I mean, it's a comeback <laughs> when he hasn't raced in years. Yeah. Right? Well, I'm just saying, right. you know, you don't want to jinx it yet. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. But it looks like most of the South Carolina guys that you normally see at Cherokee were there, and but you also got you know a lot of North Carolina guys that maybe you wouldn't see. Um, you know, so I think they, I think that was just an interesting group. And then at the same time, like you know, a Dalton Wilson. Um, wasn't uh, Nick Hoffman was there, you know, a couple of the national tour guys because you know the national tours weren't running, right? right? Um, so you got some of those, and I'll be honest, like they just I think racers like to see when someone is putting in the effort, putting effort, right? And and really trying to make something, and the Kohler bunch, you know, buying or, or taking over, um, you know, I think it used to be called Friendship Motor Speedway, and honestly, I've been around this sport. I used to live in North Carolina when I first got started. I don't know. I didn't, you never heard much about that track, right? right. Like, um, you know, and in fact, I think when he bought it or took over, uh, I believe they bought it. I'm not sure, but, or I would assume with all the work they put in there, they bought it, but, you know, kind of heard some people saying, eh, that place has never really done that well. Right. Like, you know, never raced that, that great. Um, I think that people like to see someone really put an effort into it and, looks like i mean the racing was solid i thought yeah. it and it'd be pretty good the racing was good and also i saw uh some pictures and it's like man that looks like a nice place to go race or go watch a race right. you know yeah. like they well, have the, the tier parking and rv park right like it's, exactly it's made to be a big event facility yeah. or they're trying to turn it into right. a big event facility and and you know I mean, it's still new right they just took over last year but you know with some of the races they put on late in the year last year and you know, obviously with the schedule they put out this year and we go there, our series mm -hmm. in a few weeks, uh, world of outlaws got a big race there. I believe, I think Memorial day weekend, um, you know, just about all the Carolina tours go there at some point. Um, so I think, you know, people like to see a track, you know, that, that someone is really trying to build and, and bring in events and, you know, make the racing better and put on good races and 10,000 to win thousand to start on a Friday, you know, that's pretty solid, right. Um, drivers like that. So it's, uh, good to see them coming out and supporting it. So, um, you know, kudos to all of them. Kudos to, um, uh, Jason walls with the mid East series, trying to get that deal going and, you know, had a good turnout and, uh, 
you know, a lot, lot, again, I think, I just feel like the regional level, when you see, you know, you know, we, we talk about, you know, every time a track, you hear about a track closing and getting bought, you know, it's all the negatives and, you know, this doom and gloom for the sport, but then you, you forget, you know, when you hear things about like Bobby Kohler and his, you know, his bunch buying this track and doing what they've done with it, or, you know, East Alabama was recently purchased and it's someone who's planning on, um, uh, already know, is doing yeah, upgrades, doing a ton of yeah. upgrades and everything. And I'm excited to see how that, that goes this weekend with them and the rest of the year there. And, uh, Livonia was recently purchased and is being, you know, investment going into the facility mm -hmm. as a racetrack. Um, you know, that, that is still happening, right. They're not all being sold, uh, to become, you know, junkyards, right. Or, or not junkyards, but you know, insurance um, auto auction, yeah. whatever sub, auto subdivided, auction subdivided subdivisions. Right. And so, <laughs> and so that's, that's good to see. And hopefully, um, you know, hopefully for someone like Bobby Kohler, it's, it's worth it. Right. And you right. That's what the sport needs is people like him investing in it and, and seeing opportunity yeah, and, and seeing and, return on investment yes, as well. So, um, definitely. I think, I think, I think as a sport, we see that, right. I think drivers and teams, see that you know hey we need to support this because what they're doing is good for the sport you know he doesn't have to be spending all that money and risking all that money on this we need to make sure it's worth it you know give support you know, it support that mm -hmm. um so it's good for him and then other people who have the the means to invest in the sport are motivated to do right. so right so well, that's good referring specifically to ultimate um watching the video looking at the pictures i saw also floating around facebook it's i'm excited for us to go there and yeah. uh mm -hmm. What is it? May? May we going there? Third. Yeah. Do with I, the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series yeah, going there third. in May. So so we go in two weeks, not this weekend, but next we go to All Tech. Mm -hmm. And we got a week off. And then we do Smoky Mountain on April twenty sixth, I believe. Yeah. And the very next weekend it's that's uh, it's ultimate, ultimate on Friday, May third. Yep. Saturday is Lancaster for twenty K on May fourth. Saturday, May fourth. Yeah. So, so big stretch racing. I actually was just talking about that with Shadow today. I was like, we could go to Smoky Mountain. Hang out in the mountains, then go, go over yeah, it's, to Ultimate. It's not that far from there. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. If you, you know, have a week in the mountains there. Kids. Yeah. yeah. School still in. Yeah, that is a problem. Anyway, we'll figure that out. Hey, uh, Jeff, thank you for the uh, the super chat, the $20 there. Good stream. Always nice to hear you all's opinion. Well, we appreciate that. And hey, I'm just glad this many people, well, this many of you all like to listen to our opinion. Yeah. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us. And uh, we'll reiterate that these are our opinions. And, you know, that's uh, if, if y'all disagree with them or whatever, we, you know, that's, that's cool. No big deal. Well, <laughs> well, we're not sorry, but you know, <laughs> usually can convince me to change my opinion with some sound facts that I don't know about real quickly. Yeah. So, I mean, anyway, uh, if you don't yeah. like it, then tell thanks, me. Thanks. Uh, uh, thanks for the, the super chat, Jeff. Sure. Appreciate that. Um, hey, man, if we're going to a new subject, you're going to have to talk about it a minute without me. I think I'm, I'm about I'm I was, about to pee my pants over here. If you've been noticing, I've been over here I've just kind of shifting a little. I'm like, oh, I gotta pee. Oh man, I think that's about going to wrap, wrap, wrap it up. Um, uh, hey Trey, uh, Trey Mills with the setting on pole at I-75. That was I impressive. Think yeah. ended up fifth. I did want to. Was it fifth or sixth? I six? just want to say in general, like how cool it was because last year with the Hunt the Front series, that's where I was going with this. We, all our guys were kind of from the same area. <laughs> like, go ahead, Jesse. Race, like, <laughs> all right, y'all go ahead. Just leave yeah, it on the screen. Yeah. I'll be right back. Mute your Maybe mic. Mute your mic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, carry um, on. No, no, no. Like last year, whenever we, you know, when uh, you know, our, we tip even at non-series races, you typically, you know, we're racing the same the series guys, right? Like maybe not all of them, but a lot of the same ones. Whereas the series this year, the guys who have committed to run it, and at this point, and obviously, you know, that'll change. I understand that. But you have guys from different areas, right? We have a pocket of guys, you know, guys from the Carolinas, mm -hmm. guys from, you know, Alabama, the Florida guys, the the middle guy, you know, guys, East Tennessee. Um, so it's cool to see you know, when you have an off weekend like this and everyone, everything's so spread out. Right. You know, we were, was it Friday night? You had, um, you know, Joseph and Bo uh, or Joseph and, and Dalton were on the front row. Right. Yep. At, Joseph and Dalton Cook Marl. at Southern. You had, you had um, was it Winger and Tanner English? Winger and English at Clarksville. On the front row at Clarksville. You had um, Trey Mills uh, on pole Trey at I 75. Impressive at I 75. Uh, 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 Carson Ferguson, who, yeah, I get it. They're probably going to run Lucas Oil, but at this point, they're still. You know, technically signed he signed up for the hunt the front um, super dirt series and he was yeah, also in someone else's car um yeah, exactly. but still 
you know, yeah, that was pretty cool Friday night when I'm like looking at it, I'm like, man, look at this. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, this is pretty cool. And then, you know, you see like Zach Mitchell winning it at Cherokee, um, Joseph and Bo, uh, down here at Southern Winger. Yeah. Up Winger there. got the win at Clarksville. Yeah. It's just cool to see those guys representing, um, says a lot about, you know, the, the, the talent and the depth, uh, you know, on our series. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that is, uh, it, it, that's the guys you, you want those guys that are the top guys in the, the region right. to, to run your series. And then if, you know, they don't end up running all the races you want them like Winger last year ran, you know, how many races did he run, you know, um, on, on yeah, our series, quite, quite a few. few. <laughs> um, that's, you know, your, your goal is to get those guys, you want them to all come race your series, but the same, you know, they're not all going to, because they can't all win it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but you want them all there for, for as much as you can get them there. Yeah. I would, uh, I thought Joshua had a proud, um, proud father moment there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, that, but a proud creator moment, promoter moment. Promoter yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. By father, I meant that's your, your baby is the series, I, I not know, those yeah, guys. The series, the series, series. Guys. you know what I mean? Is that right? Is that, well, did you, were you able to listen to us? Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about all these guys that are running the series that are on the front row and, you know, winning, winning these races. races. Well, well, by God, we got the whole Southeast covered with everybody that's, that, you know, that's fast. <laughs> Solid like, point. Like that they're that they're the, in our that series. Was the goal. I mean, that was the goal. So, like, know? yeah, that's that's to be expected when there's a bunch of spread out races across the Southeast. Like, yeah, our guys are representing. Like, we got we got all the fast guys running our series. Hey, yeah. speaking of representing, uh, one other thing I did want to touch on. I wish we could have gone to this race, uh, the um, the Needmore race. Oh yeah, Chance yeah. Smith. Um, the Southern Heritage Classic, right? I believe it was mm -hmm. called. They had the Crate Racing USA series there and um, several other divisions and had a new uh, record, track record for car count, 246 cars. So all this race, all this racing we talked about, right? And, and how it's, you know, having so many super late models racing this past weekend, it shows the, the health of the sport. Well, then you add on top of that, you have a place like Needmore in South Georgia, or I hope it's South Georgia. It could be Central Georgia. I apologize because I've gotten in trouble for referring to places South of Georgia before, and it was actually Central Georgia. Anyway, need more over in Georgia, um, having 246 cars as well on uh, on cool the weekend. Car. That's, that's, that's solid. solid. Yeah, I think 40 I just, I just crates, think, something like that. Yeah, 41 crates, I think it was. I just think, uh, and Richie, was it Richie Stevens? Yes, the, Richie Stevens got the win. Got the win. Uh, I think it's... Um, you know, you can always find the doom and gloom in the sport, right? Like mm -hmm. the reasons to feel like, oh, the sport's dying. And here's a lot of things to be concerned about. But, you know, when you look at a weekend like this where, um, you know, that many, you know, just that that many racers across the southeast. And, you know, I, I feel like most of the events, you know, it's hard to tell when you're watching from afar. And, you know, you can spin any, you know, things any way you want. But looking at the pictures and the live streams and the posts and social media and, everything it seems like all these events were pretty solid pretty successful yeah. right like um you know like that's i think that's a good sign and you know that, that's good for the sport and hopefully um at least in the southeast we're seeing you know a lot of positivity and a lot of uh you know continued uh momentum and hopefully growth for the sport going forward um you know, there's no doubt it's changing and evolving but you know it's, it is is it is hopefully uh continue to build that momentum and, and grow right no doubt exactly and hopefully next year we can make it to uh to that event at needmore got it uh, so that was we'd you know kind of he debated on yeah you know but it's, it's hard just to skip a when you got you know, that going track. on at the house you know that's right there you can sleep in your own bed and go race two nights for good money it's hard to drive you know plus oh, we yeah. don't like Our easter weekend no yeah one, you know everyone we all had plans um you know sun sunday yeah and, you know and we only have one day. crate car currently so yeah uh, Joseph wasn't about to let Jesse go over there and race and him not race. <laughs> yeah. Well, that reminds me I'm taking his seat out. So it's going to make it even harder for him to kick me out. Yeah. So, <laughs> he uh, be able to fit in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On, on that note, unless y'all got anything else, I uh, just yep. want to let Jesse know he missed out on a fun game of uh backyard baseball. Um, oh my I, gosh. I, I, yeah. I was kind of reading the lines. Okay. It's okay. Cause you didn't want to, uh, you didn't want you, to smoke here. Right? Are, you, you know, no, you know, didn't want to wake up feeling as sore as I did this morning. That's what yeah, you didn't want. Oh no. Here's what gets me. I dropped Joshua off. We're winding things up at Southern, you know, Saturday night. He gets out of my truck. Man, my back is killing me. And then I get what? text messages. Then I get text messages yesterday about the grand slam home run somebody hit off of him or something. And they're playing <laughs> baseball. Yeah. I'm like, his back was, was uh, really I'm, killing him. You talk about waking up this morning, sore Jonathan. I thought I could hardly <laughs> move Saturday night 
uh, I had to, you know, it wasn't just the shooting. Like I, I was shooting video, which you did too. We kind of tag teamed that for the the production, but just being on my feet all weekend, like my back was killing me. Mm -hmm. Could hardly move. And I thought Sunday morning, I was like, I'm going to wake up and be in just so much pain, but I wasn't that bad. And then we get over to Joseph's for, for Easter and do the, the egg hunt and everything else. And I had to show y'all since someone said something about breaking out a new, you know, wiffle ball and, you know, I, oh, I, I yeah. couldn't let the opportunity pass to remind y'all that I am by far the most athletic one. Of the yeah, bunch. Okay, you you just just be glad that I was not there. <laughs> I well, think I just, won. No, we were doing. What do you so. even call that? What we were playing, where you you rotate? I don't. You know, you're anyway. You got you got ghost men on, and you're trying to score. Yeah. I don't. I don't remember anyway. But I will say the best hit came from Kayla. Joseph's wife, Kayla, off of Joshua pitching. Hold on. Listen, listen. <laughs> I had been throwing, like I said, just bringing the heat for, for you and Joseph. And Kayla steps up <laughs> yeah. there. And I, Joshua yeah, lobs one up there, first school. pitch. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'll just I'll let my, rest my arm a little bit here. Bow. Like, Gone. first pitch, just smoked it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it would put a dent in the ball. You know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then the next like, pitch, right, she tries to, the next pitch, she tries to kill it. And it's like, it's just, she completely whips, like slings yeah. the bat and everything. It was I mean, funny. Like she swung for the, the beyond yeah. the fences on that one. <laughs> anyway, so we had a good Easter. I uh, hope everybody else yeah. did too. Um, also, yeah, hope y'all. Yeah. And um, Tennyson found one of the prize eggs. So that was nice. good. He, mm -hmm. Yeah, no help. He, he found it. Mm -hmm. was, uh, was anyway, good. hope y'all all enjoyed the podcast as well. Um, Jesse, Wednesday night. I'm assuming over on the gaming channels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Warzone Wednesday on the gaming channels, Twitch or YouTube. That's gonna be fun. I'm. Hey, if y'all need a fit, you're going for 50 people. Is what what we gotta have I, to have our little yeah, private I thing. I think. I think we got there. If you we need should. one more, I'll download it again. I'll All download right. it again. All right. Um, yeah. But hey, I just want to say real quick before we call it tonight the the Easter conversation. Uh, Tom Lowry and Kim Lowry, the bunch of Southern Raceway, did a mm -hmm. great job with the Easter egg hunt. Uh, give away hunt it really wasn't it was more of a run and pick them up um off the off the track on the track there um huge turnout of kids you know mm -hmm. and, and everyone seemed to enjoy it and i seen a lot of smiling faces and laughing and running around having a good time my kids loved it um and and still finished i think the super feature was done by right at a little after 10 o'clock so yeah i um, think the whole show was done by like 10 30 yeah. uh um, and they gave away like 40 bikes yeah, i think exactly so uh to, to kids them for for a good event and um you know track promoters if you're listening it's not a bad idea to you know um you know try to be creative and get yeah. folks to the track get kids to the track and help uh you know get them on board with sport and you know being part of the sport so yeah, exactly all right uh so check jesse out wednesday evening on the gaming channel hunt the front gaming here on youtube or on twitch uh we should also at some point wednesday hopefully wednesday afternoon have the saturday night video out uh from southern raceway uh, and we will have another podcast joseph will join us later in the week and we'll have us a podcast over on patreon htf nation on patreon you're about to run you're going you're going to run out of fingers to type all these links out jesse um i've already, got, I've already got the tab he's up, got really? it Shortcut. got it uh figured out so that's htf nation on patreon that's patreon.com slash hunt the Don't front forget, we'll have another if you one there want to listen to these you know the whole thing once in your podcast app no ads, you know, don't have to, you know, worry about closing the app on YouTube here. Uh, Patreon, you can do that. We, yep. we repost them. You know, it'll probably be tomorrow before I can get this one up. But, uh, you know, that that you can listen to it like an actual podcast on if you're on Patreon. And yeah. It's real simple to, you know, put the link into your RSS link into your uh, in your favorite podcast app and, and get it'd be just like any other podcast you get. So there you go. That's the way you want to do it. The five dollar level will get you that. And uh, then you don't have to sit here and watch us. You just listen, you just to, listen to us. Um and uh oh merch htfmerch.com got free shipping going on right now until uh for the next 26 hours free shipping at midnight tomorrow night What's tuesday the, night was it beach bash beach was bash yeah it was yeah. the bash at the beach joseph won friday night so we're doing free shipping uh beach bash enter that discount code get your free shipping over at htfmerch.com that cover everything I think so. Yeah. Come see us at All Tech in a couple of weeks if you're absolutely and you know, stay tuned. Uh stay tuned. I would say there's a you know good good chance we end up at Buckshot with Joseph and Jesse Friday night. Uh, yep. but you know, stay tuned. We'll we'll let y'all know for sure later in the week. Uh but other than that, thank y'all for tuning in and hanging out with us. It's been a thank been a blast.
Thank you all for the super chats. Really do appreciate it. Hey, listen, we uh, really do appreciate it, and it does make your question stand out, and it's a whole lot easier to read one question like that than it is to try to read uh, about 5,000. We would never actually accomplish any conversation that we're trying to have if we were trying to read every single message on there. So uh, thanks to all the people with the super chats, and uh, be sure to drop a thumbs up and a like on the video if you haven't already, and uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know. That's mm -hmm. how it is. W's. W's. W's in the chat. Right, no. There Up we go. W's in the chat. All right. Got See y'all.